Good day. This tutorial will show you how to easily create good quality 2D components with transparent backgrounds from photographs that you can make yourself or get from Google Images online. One reason to do this is to keep SketchUp running smoothly, reduce rendering times, and keep your file sizes low. Gives you more time to focus on your design without spending valuable time on less important accessories in the scene. By making a collection of these items and saving them on your hard drive, you can simply insert them into similar projects so you don't have to redo it. a lot of work. While this tutorial focuses on plants, the same technique can apply to other items such as table accessories, wall art, people, you know, things like that. Let's take a look at Google Images and see what's available. Do a search for indoor plants. You can see quite a selection popping up here. You can see the resolution of these images at, at the bottom of each of the pictures. Click an image that you'd like to see a larger view and check it out for quality and resolution. And if it doesn't look good now, it won't get any better when you, until you make it a component. You don't really need a really high resolution image, you know, 700 by 700, you know, is usually sufficient. But don't be worried about, if you find a good one that happens to be 2000 by 2000, go ahead and copy it or save it and just resize it when you're in uh, your graphic program. You don't want to slow down SketchUp by using a lot of high resolution textures unless the focus of your scene is the plants themselves. You can use any graphic editing program. Uh, for this demonstration, I'll simply use GIMP. It's free and does a good job. First, what you want to do is open the file. Usually it's a JPEG, but uh, doesn't matter uh, and you'll want to apply a transparency channel then you'll want to mask the area that you're going to make transparent so I've used the color wand and you can see that by using that I've gotten most of the white got to be careful sometimes the uh, leaves or flowers will have white and you'll have to unmask that part but anyway to clean up you notice I had a little spot there that uh, it didn't quite get so I'm using the fuzzy select and adding to this selection for the transparency after you satisfied with uh, the area you notice that it didn't get quite to the edge of everything I'm going to use grow selection button there and expanded it just one pixel that was good enough for this resolution because you don't want any white or black edges around the edges of the plant that are going to show up. So after you did that, hit delete, makes it all transparent. And then you'll want to export it as a PNG file, put it in the directory you want. Click export. There you go, that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. After you drag or insert the image into SketchUp, you'll need to explode it because it comes in as an image file and you want it to be a face with edges. By default, the image texture will be projected onto the face that it's attached to. That's what you want, so the texture is mirrored onto the back side. At this point, I usually rotate the image to a vertical position. Do any resizing you think is necessary, you can resize it later. Now you want to double click the face of the image so that you include all the edges as well. Then right click to bring up a dialog box and click Make Component. You can give it the component a name now or change it later, it doesn't matter. If you're making a Face Me component, like most 2D plants, then click Set Axis, and then click on a spot on the image where you want the rotation to be set. You'll then drag and align the red and green axis locations, okay? 
click the box always face camera. Make sure the replace selection with component is checked. It usually is by default. And if you're making things like 2D wall art, you don't want always face camera selected. Now's a good time to uh, trim your image if there's a lot of white space or parts that you don't want. So just draw a, uh, a line around uh, the parts that uh, you want or don't want. And then erase the face and the edges that you want to get rid of. Since I normally don't want the edges to show up while I'm working in, in SketchUp, I'll open the component, select the edges, and click and hide so that only the face with the texture on it is visible. If you turn shadows on, you'll notice that the that SketchUp makes the shadow of the face of the image, including that part which is transparent. You know, you don't have to worry about this in, in rendering programs, but within SketchUp itself, it'll show you a rectangular face and uh, it won't look quite natural. Now, if you want that shadow to reflect the same shape as the visible part of the image, you'll have to trace a continuous line onto the face of the image. Then you'll delete the transparent part of the image so that all you have left is the outline and the face of the, the texture itself. Now you don't need to be exact with your trace. Just stay a little outside the visible part. But make sure your trace created a new face. This will add a little bit of size to the file, but you know it allows you to see a realistic shadow in your SketchUp scene. Be sure to check the interior parts of the, the plant, you know, the places where the sunlight's going to shine through. Trace those also, and uh, then you can delete the spaces that you don't want. Also keep in mind that the component that you create is 2D. If the component is facing perpendicular to the direction of the sun or any lights that you created in your rendering program, then that shadow it's going to make will look like a skinny little line. So you, you may have to adjust your lighting. trimmed off the, uh, the planter for your plant component there, you can uh, make one and they're very easy to make. And you can add it as part of the component. You can make it a separate group, group the plant and the planter together so that they're easy to move. It's up to you.
created three PNGs of different resolutions. Then I imported and made components from each one. There's not a lot of difference between uh, the 750 and the 1500. So if you keep in that range, you'll be, they'll look pretty good. One of the things about 2D Follow Me components is that you can run into problems when you go to render this and your rendering program because by, by default those follow me opponents will turn, rotate based off where your camera is. So here's a rendering of that scene and you'll notice how distorted some of the reflections are in the glass. Now I made this specifically to show off this uh, problem that uh, you might run into and there's ways to fix that. you look, all the trees that you see here are all follow me. They rotate as you move the camera around. Okay, and that's great normally, but if you have something that's going to reflect those images, you're going to see just a distorted view based off of the orientation of those components. So generally what I will do is make copies of these and then explode them so that they're no longer follow me they don't rotate and that way when they reflect on the glass they'll show up in a more realistic way as you see here and you're also going to run into problems with shadows shadows are the same way now what I've done in this I could have made a plant just like that and squared it off but instead because there's just a couple of them I just did it in Photoshop and made a shadow out of it but that's just one workaround it's generally not a problem I had mentioned earlier that you can apply the same technique to other things besides plants it could be wall art people just about anything in this particular case, uh, I've got you know I've got a client that did some remodeling, needs to lease out this uh, commercial space, but just showing an an empty room doesn't impress too many, so I turned it into a music room. But you know if I were to try and model everything in 3D, that would take quite a while and really cause a pretty good size file. But if you just use the 2D technique with transparency, make some of them follow me and some of them not, you can end up with a very realistic looking interior. Now, granted if you walk in real close, do a walkthrough, you'd be able to tell the difference, but from street view, a very believable appearance. Now some of these were started out as 2D, simply trace around the edges and, ex and use the push-pull tool and you can turn it into a 3D. And others, like the pianos, came from the 3D warehouse. So, But most of them are just 2D. And you can see that it has a very believable appearance. Another example of uh, showing the contents of a space and the elements like the uh, displays they're in 3d but the main product in this particular example are shoes and modeling shoes takes quite a while especially if you have hundreds of different styles so what you can do is is take uh, the images and turn them into 2d components or 2d with the face me feature on it so that when you move through it, you know, you get a good view from any angle.